Today we're exploring people pleasing and how it impacts family relationships. You'll learn five simple strategies to reclaim your voice and teach your family by example how to live a life without anger and resentment. A life where you can let go of what others think and be your best self. Stay tuned. Hey parents, welcome to Fulfillment Therapy. Do you want to raise your kids better and have a stronger marriage? Are you up late at night researching marriage and parenting tools and self-care tips? Do you start each day hoping for deeper connections and less chaos, but it ends with family arguments and going 12 different directions again? My name's Kendra, wife, mom, therapist, and growth enthusiast. It wasn't until I discovered how to fulfill my unmet needs that I was finally able to show up as my best self, as a spouse and parent. I realized that by meeting my needs, I could more fully meet the needs of my family with more energy and less resentment. In this podcast, I teach parents skills like boundary setting, prioritizing personal needs, communication, and claiming ownership. Just like my clients, you'll be shocked by the improvement in your marriage, parenting, and personal life when you focus on fulfilling your important, unmet needs. Ready to prioritize yourself so you can quit mentally throat-punching people? Then grab those earbuds and head outside, and let's rock and talk. Welcome back, my friends. Today is episode number 136, The Art of Saying No, Reclaiming Your Time and Energy from People Pleasing. I'm excited to talk about this today, like I often am, because I love all things mental health and wellness, as you know. But I was talking this weekend to my nephew, and he was sharing his journey working through people pleasing and overcoming that. He's older now, and we had this long conversation about how he struggled with this most of his life, and especially in his teenage years, and it's still something that he's learning about and overcoming. When he talked, I was reminded about my own journey in letting go of people-pleasing, and I realized as I was thinking about it that this is a topic that I haven't specifically talked about. I feel like I've touched on it in almost every episode, but I haven't had one specifically aimed at people pleasing. So I thought it was long overdue and I'm excited to jump into it today, especially like always, I do a lot of research and I'm always diving in more than most podcasters do from the feedback that I've gotten from others, but I just love it. I love the research part of it. I love to provide you with information that's going to help you and going to help your families and your community. So I brought you a lot of beautiful nuggets that will really help you in your journey today. But before we do, I want to mention something I haven't mentioned quite yet, and it's been out for several months. I don't think I have anyway, but we have a new blog. So check out that blog on fulfillmenttherapy.org. It's just on the bar at the top and you'll see it. We're still tweaking design and doing things like that, but the content and information is there. So check it out. I'm so excited that I have a wonderful team to help me. I currently have nine interns. That number keeps climbing as people are reaching out to me. And I said, you know what, I'm good at organizing things. Why not? And they have been a tremendous help and support to me. So because of that, we have lots of things coming, like I already mentioned, but the blog is one of those things. We're going to do a blog post on every single podcast episode we've had so that you can have all those resources and those tools and those tips in another form, not just an audio form, but you can have all of those additional helps to really improve your family life and your personal life. So check that out and all of the other things that we have coming as well. Again, you can find all of that information in the show notes or on our website, fulfillmenttherapy.org. All right, you're ready to jump in to people pleasing or jump out of it, I guess I should say. <laughs> We don't really want to jump into more people-pleasing. But let's talk about people-pleasing for a minute. 
I want to start with a quote by Brene Brown. She said, People pleasing is like a silent killer of authenticity, eroding away at our true self. That's pretty good, isn't it? Do you feel like you're not being authentic? Do you feel like you're eroding away and you don't even really know who you are? Well, when I was talking to my nephew and he was sharing how hard it was for him, he mentioned that there was this difficulty in differentiating from others and to figure out really who he was because he was so worried about pleasing others instead of himself and staying true to himself. And I see this again and again in my clients, especially those clients of mine that struggle with self-esteem. I think a reason that I haven't done an episode on people pleasing specifically is that I've almost forgotten the weight of people pleasing since I spent so many years trying to heal. And I was reminded that, no, these are those preliminary steps that people need to do. They're so foundational on having a more fulfilling life. The more that you heal, the more you're able to let go of that people pleasing. So maybe you haven't spent years healing that inner child or healing from that past trauma. Maybe you're just starting your journey and you're finding yourself back in that place over and over of people pleasing. Or maybe you don't even really know what that looks like because you've been doing it for so long. Well, we're going to talk about a lot of those things today. For example, let's explore if maybe this is you. Do you find it difficult to be authentic? Like, do people ever accuse you of just not sharing what you're feeling or what you want to do or your opinion? Do you mold yourself to be what the other person wants in order to get maybe more acceptance or maybe to avoid contention or even those unpleasant feelings in the room? Do any of those resonate with you? (laughs) If so, you might be a people pleaser. Or for many of my clients, they do this because they're so sensitive to thoughts and feelings of others, like they're these empaths. And they feel very keenly the feelings of other people in the room. And it's almost painful to feel that discomfort or those negative emotions from other people. And that reminds me actually a lot of my little brother, Jamin. And as several of you know, Jamin was my youngest brother and he passed away. I really do believe that a big part of the reason that he died was because he was so sensitive to the feelings of others. He didn't know how to let go of people pleasing. He didn't know how to advocate for himself and his own wants and his own needs. And honestly, it breaks my heart to think about that. Maybe there's something that it could have done to help him even more. Now, I did try, but I sometimes wonder if I didn't do enough. Now, in this earth life, it's too late for my brother, but there's other people that I can help and there's people that you can help. My friends, you can't please everyone. When you're too focused on living up to other people's standards, you aren't spending enough time raising your own standards, raising your own fulfillment and quality of life. And when you are not able to do that, you don't show up as your best self and you're not able to spread those positive ripples I talk about all the time. Now let's get specific here about people pleasing again. What is the definition of people pleasing? People pleasing is when you have this tendency to prioritize the desires or the opinions or approval of others over your own needs or your values. This might involve maybe that excessive effort to gain that acceptance and avoid conflict, which in turn leads to that lack of authenticity or that self neglect. I see this in moms all the time. I often see it in religious communities. And again, I'm not blaming religious communities. There's so many beautiful things there, but that is sometimes a byproduct of being too charitable. (laughs) Like you lose your sense of self and it's such an imbalance that it ends up becoming a vice instead of a virtue if it's not in check. Michelle Pfeiffer said this, people pleasing is a self-destructive and soul suffocating habit that hooks you into always putting others needs before your own. My friends, do you do that? It's so easy to do that as a parent, but do you do it excessively so that it's self-destructive and soul suffocating? 
Only you can determine that, but maybe you feel so depleted and unhappy that that might be an indication that it is not in a healthy balance. So let's explore that a little more. Do you put your family's needs and wants ahead of your own too often? Do you self-sacrifice so much that you find yourself resentful and angry? I often notice those two things in my clients before they even do. It's a little clue that they might be overextending themselves and people-pleasing too often. Do you hold back from sharing your own opinions or wants or needs in an effort to be helpful or charitable or good? But the main thing that you notice after years of doing this is just that you're exhausted and you're tired of being a doormat and you're tired of being unappreciated. Okay, so you probably have a good indication right now from the things that I've said whether or not you are a people pleaser. Maybe a little more than you might have suspected before. So what do you do to stop people pleasing? I'm going to give you five tips to focus on. Just five. <laughs> so do these five things as much as you can and remember that it won't be an overnight solution, but it will be the beginning of beautiful change if you keep at it. So let's go through these five simple, actionable strategies or tips. Number one, self-awareness. This is another thing that I talk about a lot, but unless you actually address this and stop burying it, it is going to continue being a problem. Like I always say, you can journal about it. Just free write. Set the timer and do this for 10 minutes three times a week or for 30 minutes on a Sunday or five minutes before bed every night. Whatever resonates with you. Maybe you're telling me, you know, I'm just not a writer. I'm never going to do it. It's not going to work. Okay, if that's you, that's fine. Pull out your phone, open the voice memo app, and I want you to do the same thing for five minutes or 10 minutes every time you decide to do it. So maybe it's once a week, maybe it's three times a week, maybe it's nightly. Another thing you can do as always is get a counselor. It's important to explore your relationship and if you're making it a one up or one down relationship. That was really impactful for me when Kenzie was the first one to share that from Terry Real, I believe is the first one that talked about it in quite that way. And so did Jennifer Finlayson Fife. And I've gone and kind of researched that more because it's such a great way to conceptualize it. Like I've taught my clients these things before, but once they recognize, oh no, is this a one up or one down relationship? Do I really see them as an equal or not? Like that's an easy way to do a self-check, like take a temperature a little bit of what that relationship is like. And what I mean by that, if you don't remember, is just say in your relationship with your children, do you think that they are more important to you or less important to you? Do you think that you are equal? And depending on what you think determines how you will respond. Do you give too much because you think they are of more value? Or do you do too little because you think they're of less value sometimes based upon your actions? Or do you know that you're both equals? For example, do you put all of your time and energy into supporting their extracurricular activities and you don't do your own or you don't have your own hobbies or you don't go on date night or you don't go on girls nights or you don't go on outings? If this is you, then regardless of what you say, your actions are showing that they are of more worth than you are. And there is part of that that is so normal as a parent, like you elevate your children above yourself, and that is very beautiful in some ways, but not when it leads to anger and resentment and running on fumes. Your children are best served when you see yourself as equals and equally as deserving of things that will elevate you and help you become your best self. If you're not modeling that for them, that is when family dysfunction begins. 
So for now in this, I just want you to be self-aware of these things. That is, again, like I said, through journaling or through those voice memos or getting a counselor and just exploring these things with your counselor. All right, number two, assertiveness training and boundary setting. Again, I feel like this is something I address in almost every counseling session, in almost every coaching session, and in almost every podcast episode. It tells you how important it is. If you just feel like you don't know enough about it, I have like 300 episodes, not really, but I have a lot of episodes about that. Just go through the titles. Otherwise, just check out YouTube videos about it. Like, what is assertiveness or what is assertiveness training? How can I set boundaries effectively? Or in the show notes, I'm going to put a link to number nine that talks specifically about assertiveness training. And then I also have links in the show notes for worksheets that I created for my clients. This is an assertiveness worksheet and a boundary setting worksheet. So check out the show notes for all of those free resources, which I usually charge for, but I do not hear on this podcast. I want to share a quick unknown quote with you, and it says, You are not required to set yourself on fire to keep others warm. Like, how much are you self-sacrificing to help others when it's to your own detriment? Okay, tip number three, self-compassion. My friends, this is so key as well. Because I'm only giving you five tips, honestly, they are all very key. But I want you to recognize that your worth is not dependent on the approval of others. But this takes time to really believe that. So practice that 1% by not agreeing to other people right away and saying no in a safe space. I might have mentioned this before. I think I did actually. But I started by having a paper planner instead of the planner in my notes. And I started by giving myself time to respond to people when they were requesting something. So that goes for my kids, my friends, church assignments, all of those things. I do not say yes immediately. Is this going to be too much for me or my family? Is this going to compromise my ability to show up as my best self? Or do I have the capacity and ability to give this right now, to do this and to do it without resentment and anger? So I ask myself those questions before I say yes or no, and then I respond. And as I do this more and more and more, it is easier to advocate for myself and it is easier to unapologetically say these things. Now that does take time. So give yourself the space to learn and to grow into that self-compassion. Sometimes it requires coming up with your own mantra to remind yourself to have greater self-compassion and to let go of that people-pleasing. For example, it could be something as, I am safe to share my own wants and needs. Or I will advocate for myself And remember that I am of equal worth and value as those around me. Just something like that to help you remember. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, it is okay to say no. It is okay to treat yourself as an equal and to remind yourself that you matter too. All right, number four, authenticity. My friends, you can reconnect with your authentic self by expressing your true thoughts feelings, and values without fear of judgment or rejection. But this takes practice. There have been many times when I have been rejected or judged. I can't even count how many times. And those times still sting. And yet, I know that when I am being authentic, I have no regrets. Even though things hurt, it is far better to be your true self and be rejected than to be accepted for something that you are not. And I have learned through many years with my family and other people that there is no joy there if you opt for approval over authenticity. Brian McGill says this, People pleasing is not about kindness. It's about trying to control what others think of you. And then Brene Brown says this, People-pleasing isn't just about being nice. 
It's about seeking external validation to feel worthy. So my friends, this is a worthiness issue and this is a control issue. If you're not able to be authentic, then it's probably because you are trying to control others too much or you're scrambling for worthiness. And those are things you can work on with a counselor. So keep that in mind. Okay, last but not least, number five, reframe those beliefs. Say no more often, like I just mentioned a little bit ago. In fact, say no first and then make a case to yourself for saying yes. Like explore why you would want to say yes. This often goes hand in hand with like CBT or putting your thoughts on trial. So when I'm talking about reframing beliefs, I'm talking about changing those neuro pathways and that old wiring that believed that you had to do all these things to please others. And you need to find these mantras that help you change that mindset because it's honestly not true. It's old information that no longer serves you. For example, you could say something to yourself like, I'm not responsible for other people's feelings, no matter what they say to me. Or, I don't have to go above and beyond for others to be worthy of their love. Or, I don't have to pretend to agree. I can have my own opinion without apology. I can take ownership from my side of the street, but I don't have to take ownership for what is on their side of the street. I can express my sincere emotions. Prioritizing myself isn't selfish. It's necessary. And so on. My friends, just look up mantras for people-pleasing or affirmations that you can say to yourself if this is something you're struggling with. And there are so many out there, but there's certain ones that would definitely resonate more with you. And choose some of those. Put them in your phone, put them on the wall, whatever you need to do to remind yourself to say those things more often. I just want to end with two quotes. The first one is by Paulo Coelho. He said, when you say yes to others, make sure you're not saying no to yourself. And I know a lot of people out there would be like, well, that's okay to say no and to deny yourself of things because that is charitable and Christian and kind. And while I agree with a lot of those things on some level, if it means that you are putting yourself last and you are angry and resentful and bitter and unkind, you will never show up as your best self, my friends. So reevaluate how you're approaching that and change that outdated wiring and neural pathways that no longer serve you. And here's the last one. The moment you stop worrying about what others think about you is the moment you start being yourself. It's beautiful, isn't it? I just want to tell you, my friends, that as I've done my own healing journey and watch my clients do the same, you arrive at this point and look back and you realize you really don't care as much anymore. It still stings when people reject you or think things that are not really fair or valid, but you can set that aside. You can set it on a shelf and just recognize that, yes, that does hurt, that does sting, and yet I'm being authentic. I'm being who I was meant to be. I'm doing what feels right to me, and I don't have to apologize for that. And that is where true joy and fulfillment lies. Best of luck, my friends, in practicing these five strategies. So rapid fire again, that is self-awareness, assertiveness training and boundary setting, self-compassion, authenticity, and reframing beliefs. Practice those things again and again so that you can reclaim your time and your energy and show up as a better person personally and to your family. Take care, my friends, and I'll see you back here in just a few days. And if you haven't already, please go leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. This will make it so that we can spread more positive ripples and change your personal and family life, not only for you, but for so many others. That is a major help and a small three-minute thing that you can do to help spread that positive change. Thank you for all that you do and all the support that you share, whether it's sharing those episodes with your friends or 
putting it on social media or giving us a review. We very much appreciate it. So thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, chances are someone else would too. Would you take 30 seconds to share this with a friend who's looking for greater family fulfillment? And while you're sharing, tell me what you think about the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. It refuels me when I hear this podcast is helping you, no matter what your house or your hair looks like. I'll meet you back here every Monday and Thursday morning for more episodes. Until then!